Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. Be the difference in someone's life today. Phone 1-800-257-296 or visit catholicmission.org.au. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and peace be with you. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone, and welcome to the first Mass celebrated for Mass for you at home from the Wollongong Diocese. So as we come together today on this Easter Sunday, let's call to mind the beauty and the joy of God's resurrection in the person of Jesus, and ask forgiveness for those times we've not lived in that spirit of resurrection. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us by your truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And as the shepherd, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we cry out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death, and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses we have eaten and drunk with him after the, his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the paschal victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb, and Christ the undefiled hath sinners to his father reconciled. Death with life contended, combat strangely ended. Life's own champion slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there attesting, shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week, and still dark, when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Roman authorities 
brutally dealing with the challenge of any insurrection, used fear, crucifixion being one of the most profound methods, to convince the populace that any challenge was doomed to failure. The same tactic has been used by civil and religious authorities, even Christian, to keep people in check for centuries. Our ability to be deceived has often meant that we've missed what is happening around us in our world. But we also miss what we read or listen to in the scriptures also. It would be easy to believe that the discovery of the empty tomb was the most significant event of the first day of the week. And while it has significance, it's far from the central reality. The Jewish historian Josephus briefly acknowledged the story of Jesus' death when Pilate was governor, but he makes no mention whatsoever of the empty tomb. For most people, life went on as usual, and Jesus became just another Galilean troublemaker, dealt with brutally by the Romans. However, central to the Easter story is the community and the experience of the community, whether the women at the tomb, the whole group of disciples in the upper room, the two on the road to Emmaus, as they began to experience the risen Christ and respond to the compulsion to move out and make Jesus known. While some may visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, others will not. None will experience the empty tomb in its starkness. But here we encounter the risen Christ. We're strengthened by the Eucharist, by word and sacrament, and by each other to go and announce what we experience. Christ is risen. Yes, the tomb is empty, but it is only empty as a sign and promise of a much more important reality, that the full liberation of our God has come. And as all the disciples before us, we too are sent to announce that Jesus is risen, which is what our God has done. Today, on Easter Sunday, in place of our creed, we will renew our baptismal promises. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the law of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. And do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, be bestowed on us, forgive our sins, keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, redeemed by the risen Lord, let us raise our prayers to God on this glorious day. That the Church, anointed with the Holy Spirit, may always bear witness to the world in your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations will work together to fight the COVID virus in your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have been washed by the waters of baptism will grow more deeply into the life of Christ in your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of all time, this is the day that you have made. Hear these prayers and help us to live as faithful witnesses who proclaim the good news of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let's greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus out of every nation hath redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, alleluia, glory be to God on high. Alleluia to the Savior who has won. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favour, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>